want to talk about Luka Doncic. Now, I'm going to, you know, go around this in a little bit of a seemingly circuitous way, but I do want to start with talking about ESPN and Tim Bonteps at ESPN, one of their uh, writers. He does this thing where he constantly asks, he polls 100 league insiders to see, you know, where they view the MB MVP race mm -hmm. at any given time and some other, you know, mm -hmm. some other races the award for awards over the course of the season. Defensive just, player of the year, yeah. six man. Just to give us an idea mm -hmm. of where things are. But MVP ends up being the big one. And his latest, um, you know, dispatch when it comes to his polling shows that Nikola Jokic is firmly, you know, in that first place spot, which makes sense. I think we've all come to appreciate Nikola Jokic as one of, if not the best player in the league as of right now. Uh, the only other player to get a significant amount of first place votes in this polling is he allows people to do, you know, their ranked choice vo voting in the same way that you'll see with the MVP voting once it's official at the end of the season. Shea Gildas Alexander, 24 first place votes compared to Nikola Jokic's 69, which is clearly a nice amount of votes. And so with those two guys seem to be very clearly up at the top, coming in third with a lot of third place votes also, Giannis Adetokounmpo, and then coming in fourth, and he has a majority of fourth place votes, is your Dallas Maverick, Luka Doncic. And it just feels like uh, he has been scoring incredibly, he has been moving the ball incredibly, and one of the things that I know that I've always kind of been a little bit of a, a stickler about is the lack of defense. Now he's not going to be any anybody's like incredible defensive player. He's never going to be right. You know, Hakeem Olajuwon, or you not, he's not going to be Kawhi Leonard in that regard. Like he's just not going to be that. However, you've seen the defensive effort improve, steals, and yeah, you've seen steals mm -hmm. absolutely show up. And with his offensive prowess, the ways in which he's able to find and make plays, the ways in which he's able to get his own shot, and the more consistent three point shot making that is not, uh, that's not nothing to, you know, turn your nose up at. What is it going to take for Luka Dodgers to move up that MVP ranking and ultimately win an MVP? Because it feels like he has been in the running for five years straight. But when, you, when it comes down to late in the season and ultimately when the award is given out, he ends up being third, fourth, and, and in some ways an afterthought. I, I think uh, it's going to be the Mavericks being in the regular season a uh, top one or two team in the West. And the reason I say this is because SGA, Shea Gilders Alexander, I mean, the reason that he's getting all these votes is because wow, Oklahoma City's so good. Who is their star? And it's, mm -hmm. in other words, he's he's a definitely an all-star. Don't get me wrong. Right. But in the MVP conversation is because look where he has taken Oklahoma City and that young team. Yeah. With that being said, you look at Joel, Joel Embiid last year. Oh, Philadelphia's on a roll. Jokic was the two-time MVP. And now Jokic, even though Denver's number four in the West right now, they're defending champions. And there was a lot of people in the playoffs like, man, I don't know. We should have probably gave it to Jokic. So I'm just saying, you – there's going to be people, because it's subjective. The whole thing is about writers voting. Right? Absolutely. So you got to look at Luca's body of work. You got to look at where the team is playing, when these guys are voting. It's almost like every time you look up, Maverick fans are aware of this. Luca's making some historic record. He's done something that hadn't been done since Oscar Robertson. Right. And it's like, where's the payoff? Well, finally, he's named uh, Western Conference Player of the Week. Yes, yesterday, this past week. But there was stuff going on in January where he was breaking all these records. We're like, look at the Mavericks record. Look at Oklahoma City's record. Oh, it's going to be Shea Gilchrist. I mean, it's just go down the list. So that's part of what he's going to have to overcome. The Mavericks going to have to have a better record by the time they do this voting. Yeah. And at the same time, I think um, you can look at say, oh, let's see some defense. I don't think that's going to happen with him. I mean. He can, he can do some defense, but it's never going to show up. He's never going to be Kobe, shutdown defender. He's not going to be Giannis. Right. And, and we, like, right now, if you were to say, okay, this guy's doing a poll of all these different executives, these different NBA insiders, yes. right? If you ask them, who do you want to start your team with? I think only Jokic and Giannis are ahead of, of Luka. And even then, I mean, when you start looking at the, the differences in age and those types of mm -hmm. things, I think Luka ends well, up being the top Well, that's what start your team. Yeah, no, I'm saying. Oh, okay, I get you. So, so I think, right that, I think, are. yeah, you yeah, talk Luke about is only 24, be 25 at the end of the right. Month. Luke is younger than we're those talking two. about those two. It feels like those here's peers, but in a way, he's almost on a on a separate kind of generational yeah. tier, uh, slightly below them, and not belowing in ranking, but like in in chronologically, and so. Yeah, it, I feel like most p people would actually mention Luka Doncic as the first player that they'd want to start a team with. Yep. But 
I mean, that's not the MVP, as you mentioned. And one one thing that does worry me is if the defense does not show up in the way that, you know, it seems like people maybe want, I guess, what is going to get him that? And is it just winning? Because, I mean, win, winning matters in these things. Well, uh, let me tell you something, just yeah. so you'll know, the comp on Luka when he first started his career, is, oh, he's another James Hart. James Hart was the MVP. Yes, so he was. just know that it's definitely possible without playing D, because y'all know James Harden don't play no defense. Not, he never has. What, he's situational. That's he, all it is. I mean, there's been moments when he's average, moments, but that's see? yeah, that's that ends up being. So in other words, less, defense is not going to slow Luka from getting the MVP because Harden got it before. Uh, Russ plays some defense. He's more athletic than Harden, but it's the tri he, he's putting in triple doubles the way Russ is. Yeah. And that's that's one of the reasons why it be, becomes somewhat perplexing that he has not gotten more love in this regard. How about this? As we go to the truckwreck.com text line uh, from the 817, they say, play, play D, shut the bleep up with the refs. How much do you think his propensity to get a little, you know, get you a know, little wordy when you, it comes to fouls and those types of things? Because of subjective voting, that has to play a part because there are people outside of the Dallas Fort. They shoot, there's Maverick fans too. Lucas, stop arguing with the refs. He's so competitive. He's got to stop arguing with the refs because the refs are not robots. You mm -hmm. follow me? Yeah. You can't let the refs distract you from playing, getting back on defense. And so that's going to be part of what he has to overcome as well. And he knows it because he says it every year at some point in time. He's like, I know I've got to do better. He just does. But again, it's a vote. And it's not like... Is arguing with the refs going to cost him a championship? That's not the question. The question is the MVP, and that's a valid question. Right, and so it's one of the things that you have to hold because I know from the 2-4, and four, our, our Tolo Andy texts in, and he says, just wait till uh, Derek Lively -Live. comes back from his uh, from his nose injury, right, his broken nose. See, that's, and that's I think part of it. There's that, and then there's the idea that maybe you have, you know, you made the moves with Gafford and P.J. Washington, so maybe you end up winning more and you give yourself an opportunity to be in a better place to make it more palatable to vote for Luka Doncic. That's why I was saying the first thing. Look at the team's record. Like, like I said, Oklahoma City right now. Oklahoma City. And by the way, the way they slayed Oklahoma City, to give it in the context, they beat Oklahoma City. For those who aren't familiar, Oklahoma City is number three team in the West. They've been in the top three most of the year. But not only that, Oklahoma City was coming in off of four days of rest where the Mavericks, coming in off the road, had played every other night. They beat Philadelphia. Then the next other night, they played Brooklyn, beat Brooklyn. Then the other, other night, they played the Knicks and beat the Knicks. And then they come in with two new players and blow out the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's like, whoa. In fact, they made such a statement in ESPN's power rankings, they moved them a significant leap up to number seven mm -hmm. overall. This is based off of coming off of a bad month of, of January where the Mavericks had all these player injuries and they couldn't win three games in a row. Yeah. Now, the one thing I do wonder about is obviously you have these new guys and there's some figuring out, but then also it's one thing that you mentioned as we were, you know, pre show mm -hmm. the idea that Jason Kidd is not entirely a respecter of the regular season. Like he views the re regular season as an opportunity to, pro you know, probe and try things out to get yourself ready for the postseason. He calls it a test. He calls the regular season a test for the playoffs because he wants to see who on the roster is going to be able to help the team in the playoffs. And he'll. He'll experiment with rotations. He'll experiment yes, with he starters. Mm -hmm. But he also wants to see, because what happens in the playoffs, in these seven-game series, the other teams will start taking away your weapons. They'll take away guys. In other words, if you got an offensive guy, this Christian Wood, for example, last year, walking bucket, he can give you 20 points tonight. But he is not committed to defense, does not play defense. Coaches were trying to help him along with the defense during games. With that being said, you could not count on him in the, in the playoffs because guess what they do? They call it barbecue chicken time. They put you in a pick and roll blender and they put you in foul trouble and those 20 points are sitting on the bench. So as a coach, you can't do that to the team. You cannot say, wow, we were hoping Wood could help us in the playoffs, but he's sitting on the bench with those 20 points. Who's gonna, so he's looking for who's going to step up. And that's what you saw last night. When he started uh, the two new guys, because he didn't start them on Saturday. You're at the game Saturday. They yeah. start, he brought them in after the Mavericks already built a 15-point lead. Right. Um, but my, my point being, like, you know, with the things that you have to figure out and the ways in which Jason Kidd is going to kind of just 
move some things around. Oh, will the Mavericks win a bunch of games right. to give Luka a chance at the MVP? And to be fair, like the way that the regular season has gone, and I, you know, I've i talked to you about this, the idea of that 73-win uh, Golden State Warriors team kind yep. of taking some of the importance out of the regular season for some teams. Mm-hmm. That's the way that a lot of teams operate is we're going to figure some things out in the regular season, then we're going to go That's and way go Popovich in the has always done it. Does the, is that going to change the way, or is that going to maybe hamper the Mavs from squeezing out all the possibility and all the potential getting all the wins? Now, of course, obviously winning is still the objective, but is that going to maybe stop them from getting as many wins and putting Luke in the place where he's more visible for that MVP? I think the coaching staff is looking at a more of a balance. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the reason I say this is because I think this is just me guessing, you know, w- looking at all these games and being at all these games. It seemed like their history, they were looking at the games that they were supposed to win and experimenting in those games that they were supposed to win. I think this year... They said, we better win these damn games we're supposed to win. Because, in other words, before they were there were mandates on load management, I think there were some games that they wanted to rest Luka, like last year, oh, a back-to-back against Houston and New Orleans, well, we're going to rest Luka. And they lose the game to Houston. Well, they, they can't afford to lose games. They're like, we're not right. going to put ourselves in a position where we're not going to be a top-four team if we can. So I think there there's a mandate of, I'm saying mandate, there's a look of let's win these games we're supposed to win right and then maybe see what we got in games where you know it's a it's an even game or sure. a team i guess you know we're supposed to lose or you know a more dominant team well so i, I again it's not even about the mvp because luca doesn't care about the mvp sure. he'd like it but he wants to win a championship that's why he's arguing with the ref so much every freaking game luca wants to win every damn game you want that but not at the expense of arguing with the refs. Well, and yeah, absolutely not. And honestly, I, I it's becoming more and more apparent that like his his uh the his um, people's impression of him has mm-hmm. shifted strongly. In fact, and this isn't the end all be all, but I know ESPN they had one of their you know their their basketball show asked the question at one point, why don't players want to play with Luka Doncic and the Mavericks? And that feels asinine to ask, but. It maybe is indicative in some ways the ways that people around the league view Luka Doncic, which seems kind of insane considering just, maybe, just how good of a player he actually is. I don't think the players feel that way. I, I think maybe front office people or fans. But, no, exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, those those are people also that, that fit factor into all of these things. I will say this. Since his latest blow-up, so to speak, with that fan, you know, got asked to leave yeah. before, Luka's been very, very good with the referees. And we've seen stretches where he looks good, and you just hope that those stretches become longer and longer, and the the times in between become fewer and far between. Five game winning streak helps. Absolutely. (laughs) 